YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and uh, sorry I missed Throwback Thursday. I guess this will technically be Throwback Friday, um, but I wanted to get you some action in this week. I, I won't have time to film the Empire Total War campaign tonight, but I wanted to get you some uh, video up for Saturday, and I'll be having hopefully a little more time to record tomorrow. Uh, but part of the reason I haven't had a whole lot of time to record this week is actually kind of a big announcement, and uh, multiple times some of you have asked me since, you know, I was married, you know, like, hey, is there like a little heir, or, you know, uh, is there an heir to heir? Um, there is now, <laughs> so that's actually where I've been for the last uh, day or so. We've been at the hospital, um, so my, my wife and I welcomed our, our baby boy into the world. as a pretty amazing experience. It's my first child. Um, I know a lot of you who watch my videos aren't anywhere near the age where that's probably on your mind, but... Um, I'm sure for those of you who've experienced, and for those of you who one day will experience it, it's, it's an amazing experience. Um, a little nerve-wracking, a little tiring, but definitely um, the most worthwhile thing that I think I've ever experienced. But anyway, enough sentimental stuff. Um, I just wanted to let you all know what's going on, so you know why the, the schedule for my videos is a little off. Uh, does that mean that anything's going to change? No, uh, I'm still going to be putting out videos. It may mean that I'm a little tired here or there while he's young and we're getting things figured out. Obviously for me, family comes first, and that's why the video schedule may adjust a little bit here or there. But I promise you if I bring you videos, it's not because I'm neglecting my family or something like that. It's, Mrs. Ayer understands that I do this work, and, and uh, we both uh, are, uh, you know, like the fact that I do it, and she's supportive. And even though we have a kid here, it means we may have to adjust, but um, it shouldn't be, affect me being on here. Uh, just maybe the, the time frame that I work in or uh, how I do it. But in any case, I, I hope you all know that I love making these videos, and it's really <laughs> become a fun part of my uh, my routine every week. And I hope you enjoy them, and, I, and I've been enjoying the, um, the positive feedback and even the critical feedback that I've been getting in my videos recently. It's been really nice, and uh, it seems like you all have been enjoying it. All right, so tonight we are going to do another historical battle, and uh, we're going to move on to the Battle of the River Granicus. I'll let you Having all, crushed Greek uh, resistance to the at Chironia, Philip installed himself as the head of the League of Corinth. This gave him control over all the armies of Greece, and he immediately set about his long-avowed desire to reclaim the persian ruled Greek cities in Asia Minor. In 337 BC, Philip sent an advanced invasion force under his most experienced general, Parmenian, across the Hellespont to establish a foothold in Asia Minor. But in 336 BC, Philip was suddenly assassinated, and his young son Alexander had to move quickly to establish himself as undisputed king. Alexander immediately had all suspects executed, and then marched to Greece, where he summoned a meeting of the League of Corinth, and forced the city-states to confirm him as rightful heir to Philip. He then quelled minor uprisings in Sparta and Athens, before turning north to quash the unruly barbarian tribes. And when the city of Thebes rebelled, it soon learned what would become of those who dared defy Alexander. He razed the city to the ground and enslaved the entire population. For the time being, Greece was pacified, and Alexander turned his attention to the east and the Persian Empire. The advance force under Parmenian had been held up by the Greek mercenary leader Memnon, who was fighting for the Persians. When Alexander arrived with an army of 40,000 men, he immediately confronted Memnon at the Granicus River. All right, so let's go confront Memnon. And uh, honestly, folks, after all that I've been through this week, I'm a little too tired to even worry about changing the difficulty of medium. If you all haven't played this, I'm not sitting here telling you it's impossible, but it's pretty challenging, even on the medium difficulty on some of these battles, if you don't know what you're doing. It is late in the day. And I'm tired, so it ought to make all things fair. Approaches the river Granicus. Scouts have reported a large concentration of Persian troops on the far bank. Horse archers from Scythia and heavy cavalry from Hycania and Bactria, together with mounted axemen from Barcania. Memnon of Rhodes, a mercenary officer, commands them. He has chosen the battle site well. The Granicus is in full flow, 
and its steep, slippery banks present a formidable obstacle. The Persians seem confident that Alexander will not try an attack so late in the day. Young Macedonian king has faith in the readiness of his battle-hardened troops for such a challenge. His phalangists provide a stable, if slow-moving platform, their soft flanks guarded by the more mobile hypaspists. With the excellent Thessalian cavalry, and his own famed companions, Alexander has the men to deal the Persians a heavy blow. His destiny balanced on a sword's edge, Alexander prepares to sound the advance. All right, looks like we're ready to cross the Granicus. My strategy is going to be to punch across immediately, uh, and I'll do so up against one of the Hyrcanian cavalry. Um, just to, I guess, give me a little bit uh, softer target rather than that back train cab in the center. And then I'll want to uh, rush all my infantry off uh, across the river as soon as possible as well. Run, everybody, please. So I'm just going to get all my men running this way. I want my dromoy in, uh, in the back, which is my light cab. And then I'm going to take my missiles off skirmish and fire at will. I'm going to immediately charge over here. Got Alexander going across. One of my phalangists. Uh, oh, they're going to have to go out of phalanx formation. I want to get across the river before the Persian hoplites can get there to uh, challenge me. Okay, so Alexander gets a charge on the Hyrcanian cab, and they start going down pretty hardcore. Let's uh, punch on in. And let's get my light cab over here. Good, we made a hole, so let's quickly get up the riverbanks before we're intercepted by any other heavier units. Okay, got all my units running across. Okay, let's just get away over here and try and establish a foothold. There's heavy back tree and cab after me already. Just want to get my my own cavalry over here. And it looks like we're going to get charged by the heavy back green cavs, so I'm going to go headlong with the uh, Alexander unit. And then I'll get my Hypaspus into the fight as well. Yeah, I got a nice charge with Alexander. Just immediately routed the back green cab because they weren't, they weren't stabilized for that charge. I'm going to chase them. Yeah, I'm going to give chase to them and, and knock them off the field altogether. Pull my light cab out here. I really need my Phalan just, oh, I just got countercharged hard by the, uh, the enemy bodyguard. Let's bring my Solians about, as well as my Dromoy. Uh, looks like the bodyguard actually pulling through and being replaced with the Bactrian and Heavy Cav. Well, Memnon's dead. That was a fortunate, fortunate blow for me. Alexander's Cav unit's very strong and it's doing very good at the moment. I'm going to go reinforce against these Harkanian Cav. Let's get my missiles across the river and ready to fire. And General's bodyguard's gone. Alright. The Persian units here in the center starting to flee. Let's use Alexander to see if we can hunt down those Persian Peltas real quick. And we need to get ready to deal with the um, Persian Hoplites. No units behind me. My own missile units are coming up. Alexander routed all this stuff. Let's keep one high pass on each flank. I'm going to try and hit that heavy back green cab too to make sure it doesn't come back. Alexander's about to be under horse archer fire. Okay, let's get my hoplites in the fail. Oh, crap. I got to retreat from those Persian hoplites that are killing my high pass Here charging going on. My Padromo is back here getting hit by a heavy back train cab that came back from routing. And it is just getting hammered. That's not good. I'm going to take my Thessalian cab and go finish these guys off. I'm going to save Alexander for rear charges. The Persian Hopwites are going to come engage me. 
And I'm going to put my skirmishers over here into fire at will. Just hold the flank for now. Okay, my Thessalian cab knocked out the remainder of that back cream cab. We need to go assist my hoplites, or my phalanx just immediately, because they are, they are inferior to these Greek mercenary infantry. Not sure why that is, but hoplite units on Rome 1 are very powerful uh, when compared to their equivalent uh, Macedonian-style phalanx units. Um, but both can be routed, of course, with concentrated fire. Oh, look, Bactrian's trying to harass me from across the river. All right, we're going to just wait for the uh, Persians to, to get fixed here as well. They've routed due to overwhelming numbers in the vicinity. Those Persian peltists, I'm going to wait for them to come across the river. Okay, I am going to move up my phalangist. Alexander's going to run down some of those routing units. Yep, good. My own peltist here routing the uh, Persian peltist. Peltists are not nearly as devastating on Rome 1 as they are on Rome 2. And my Cretan archers are sitting here. They're going to be useful against the horse archers. So I'm going to keep an eye out for the uh, enemy horse archers. I'm going to move up the rest of my infantry here. Okay. Got all my infantry moving up. We're ready to engage the remainder of the... Um, Persian forces with the loss of Memnon so early in the battle that's that's got to take its toll here and the Persian hoplites can easily be outnumbered by my men at this point I'm gonna put these peltists back over here to to finish off these ones that keep coming back Persian peltists keep routing okay enemy infantry is getting fixed against my men time to move up with my cavalry it's kind of past time to be honest. You don't want your men to stay engaged with these guys for too... Well, no. I guess the, the morale effect really is playing its role. Me getting that lucky kill against Memnon um, pretty much did the trick. The Persians have just about had it. So I'm just going to come in here and absolutely mop these guys up. It's possible these other units are... Yeah, they're already shaken. Seeing the routing units. Let's just keep moving our phalanx forward. Uh, let's get my Cretans to fire at the uh, some of the enemy horsemen. Oh, not good. Got up against a phalanx here. Let's try and get out of it. Alexander's taking some losses. Kind of a dangerous situation. He's getting assailed from behind by a phalanx. Fortunately, the Barcanian horsemen in front of me, they went, oh, and these hoplites just routed too because of friendly, friendly losses. Yep. Yeah, the numbers are starting to play a game now. And uh, the enemy horse archers are now going to be under fire from my Cretans. These fleeing cavalry fleeing right into my <laughs> phalanx. <laughs> Brutal. So this looks like it's going to end up being a massive victory for the, uh, the Macedonians here. Huge victory for the Macedonians. Uh, enemy horse archers are losing men. Ooh, and they're routing now too. Yeah, these horse archers are taking losses slowly but surely to my Cretans, and the battle is over, and that's going to be a clear victory. Um, so I guess that one would be an interesting one to try on a harder difficulty and see what happens, but honestly, they don't normally route that easy. The fact that I killed Memnon like that early in the battle clearly made a big difference. Uh, usually not quite so easy to kill Memnon that early in the battle, but it's kind of weird. His cav unit charged me and then pulled through and went for my other... Um, went for my other... Uh, cavalry units. That was that's odd. Pulling through on Rome one, not a good idea, and it's that's it's weird. I haven't played the game in a long time, so I don't know what's normal for the AI. But I'm guessing the Alexander unit here got a beastly number of kills. Yep, 645 kills, <laughs> living up to his name, the Great. In that case, that's for sure. That the Salian Cav following up with 97, definitely good. So yeah, that's that was uh, pretty sweet. The Battle of the River Granicus. Let's go take a look at which battle will be next. I don't want to play it tonight, but it looks like the Battle After of Halicarnassus of the River is going to be Alexander. next, so I'll let you all see that the next time we play. Um, like I said, uh, it's going to be a little busy because I got the, the new little one with me, uh, got the, the little air, um, so anyway, uh, but I, I should still have videos coming to you, keep an eye out for more coming qu uh, quickly, I should have some time to record tomorrow, and then of course I usually schedule stuff to upload throughout the week so that you 
kind of have a steady stream of videos rather than a big hunk of stuff all at once. Parthia campaign and the Total War campaign will both be back soon. Again, this has been kind of a late uh, throwback Thursday. Hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, glad to be back with you, and have a great weekend.